Hello and welcome to this short video clip um, brought to you by the Farm Advisory Service. In today's clip we're going to look at um, mobile electric fencing units. Um, my name is Duncan McIntyre, I'm an agricultural consultant uh, with the SEC uh, based here in the Stornoway office. So in today's video, as I said, we're going to look at the, the battery powered um, mobile electric fencing units. So this morning we're looking at setting up uh, a system here. Um, we're with Ian Wardo here on, on his croft here at, at Mary Hill. Um, so Ian, can you explain to us today what we're looking to do today for you? Uh, well, here on the crop, this section of the croft is uh, a fairly large field, uh, a couple of a couple of acres. Um, I don't want to fence it into smaller paddocks um, on, on a croft my size. I've, got, I've only got like uh, th uh, three hectares here. Um, so what I like to do is uh, uh, use electric fencing in order to minimise the amount of grazing that uh, they've got access to at any one time. Because the issue you have with this section of ground is that they won't come and graze this as heavily. They like to go to the sweeter parts of the croft and then it becomes more rank on me and gets more uh, weeds and thistles growing into it. So I'm trying to stop that and by putting up an electric fence I can uh, manage the areas much better and control where they're getting into the croft. So thanks Ian. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll, we'll talk you through setting the system up, show you how easy it is to do. Um, it's a one person um, job as well which makes it even better for um, sole crofters. So let's get that started. First of all I'm going to talk you through the, the component parts of the system and then later on the video we'll look at setting it up, we'll look at the various uses for it on a croft or farm and then we'll look at the basics of, of taking the system back down again uh, once you're finished. Okay so the component parts of the, the system are um, your energizer as it's called so this connects to a battery and then connects on to the actual wire on the, the fence itself. Very, very simple. On the energizer, you have an earth a wire, you have a positive wire that fits onto the fence itself, and then you have two wires, the positive and negative, that fit onto the battery. This will then be hung on a fence or a post where you're starting the system, um, and that's your energizer spoke there about the battery, so it's just a normal leisure battery, 12 volt battery, very very simple, any battery will do of that, that type. So the next part is your post for the fence, so the plastic post, insulated post, metal spike on the end, and this one's here, I have a little step here, so make it easy for putting into the ground like that, place it in the ground, step it in, and that's your post there. Okay, so once your post's in the ground, obviously the next thing you need is your wire for the fence itself. Um, this one I've got here is a, a nylon base wire but it also has the metal uh, running through it to conduct the, the, the charge through it. I'll show you later on in the video how we set it up. Simply run it through like that and that's it set up there. I'll show you in a bit more detail as we actually set the system up. So that's your wire. There's two options you'll see. A lot of people will be familiar with the a tape version, white tape, thicker tape. Um, I think the wire one is, is, is better for this environment here. Tape tends to get blown about a bit as well, so um, that's the one I, I would use the wire. Easier to use, easier to tie off. Um, so that's all the parts that make up the system. So now we'll go ahead and look at setting it up. Now we've got our, our posts out in the area we're wanting to fence off, it's just about getting the system set up. Again, it's a very, very simple. So we've got our energizer we spoke about earlier on. So the energizer can hang, hang on the fence or fix it to a post. In this case we'll just hang it to the fence here because it's easier. Okay, so that's your energizer set up ready to go. Next thing we're looking at doing is putting the wire out. Posts are already out. So we'll put the wire out. Okay, so the wire I've got here is on a quite handy roll. 
So the first thing I do is to fix the, the wire to my first post here. So what I've done in this case at the end, it's just a case of tying a simple loop from the wire. Place it over your first post like that and then put it into the slot there as we've seen there. So the slots on these posts as we go along are at an angle and I'll show you as we go along how they fit in. So that's your starting point there, okay? Again, this, this post here could be tied back if you want, if you need it. But there's not a great deal of pressure you need to put in the wire, so it's maybe not necessary anyway. So that's our starting point. So we're now going to work along and feed the wire out through the hole or the post right to the end. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our first wire tied on there as I thought. So in this system, it's really quite clever. You'll see slots there, you place the wire at an angle there, and that's it, simple as that, and it feeds through. And you just continue doing that, roll your posts. Again, placing the wire at the height you want. So that's our, going to be our top wire there. Place it through, and carry on. Carry on doing this, until you've done all your posts. As you can see, really easy to, job to do on your own. Click through and carry on. Do that right to the end of the post, and I'll show you what to do at the other end once you're tying it off. So we've run our top wire all the way across, so now we're looking at the opposite end there. So again, simple as that, click it on like that. We'll run it down to the next level where you, where you want your wire to run across. So for an example, I want it at that height, that's the point I would put it that height, that height. So it's up to yourself. I'm going to click it on this one just now, on here, just for to give you an example. There we go. So that's that in there. That's your wire fixed on that end. And again, you're going back down through your posts. The same as we did with the top wire. We just click it on at the level you want there. So there you've got your two wires there, okay? So you'll notice that I haven't tied it off at that end. What we're going to do is run it along there and we'll tie it back at the start where the energizer is, where the pack is. With an electric fence it doesn't have to be a complete loop. The animal when it touches it completes that loop and that's how they get that, that small shock from it. So we'll run that back and we'll tie this off, cut it and tie it off at the end um, and then we'll look at actually setting up the power onto the fence itself. We've run the wire right back across. As I mentioned earlier on, no need to, to loop it back onto itself. It's a simple case of cutting the wire at this end, like that, and then you can either tension it, make a little loop there, like I did with the last one, um, or you can just simply tie it around the post itself. So, just in this case, I've just made a little loop on there. Again, slide it back into the slider where you want it to do and that's it so that's your post out and your wire run out so the next thing is we're looking at is connecting up the actual system to the fence itself next step connecting up the system so from the energizer itself we have two leads we have the earth lead and we have the lead that clips onto the wire itself so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip the one, pause it the one onto the wire itself at the moment. So that's it clipped on there. This is your earth, so any metal spike will do. Um, what you're looking to do is just place that in the ground like that. And that's your earth on there. So you've got your energizer now connected positively to the wire and you've got it connected to um, the earth as well. So the next thing to make the the fence go live is to connect it to your, your battery. So we'll just do that now. So that's your negative and your positive there connected. And that is your system ready to go there. Okay. Once anything touches that, that will complete the circuit and there'll be a small shock. Um, normally once any animals have experienced it once, then they'll stay away from it. Um, that's their natural instinct to do that. Um, and that's it. That's as simple as that. One person uh, job to do um, and really effective. So now we'll go on to chat about now that it's set up the various different uses for it. Okay now we've got it set up. Uh, very simple to do. Um, so you can just talk us through sort of 
the main uses you'll have for it here, you spoke earlier on about this area, but obviously there'll be other areas where you can use it as well. So if you just talk to that about it and how, how it's going to work for you, but also how it's going to work in the, in the labour cost environment and what other uh, options are for any other system. Well, on this croft, um, I've come to the point where there's quite a lot of new fencing needs to be done. So the fencing is getting into various stages of disrepair and it's not a stock proof as I would like it. Um, so this will offer me an opportunity to be a bit more flexible on the croft in that I can shut off the areas I want until I get uh, time to work on the fencing that I need to do. So that's, that's one great thing about it. Um, it will also offer me uh, better rotational grazing uh, on the croft. Um, when stock are miles away from the house, particularly at lambing time and that, I can control the areas that they get into so that when uh, I'm working with the sheep or the sheep are lambing, I'll take the stock nearer the house and then um, I, during the day I, let, I release them so that they can get away. But uh, it, it offers me some security as well, really. That's what that's given me. Um, the deferred grazing is a great thing um, and the rotational grazing because you can protect a sword. So say, in, for instance, if I was going to do, and I intend to, this is a park I intend to reseed next year, um, uh, I can control the areas that they get into so that they have minimal grazing on it, but um, uh, the area will be able to recover and regrow um, much quicker and much more effectively with the use of electric fencing. You, just, you mentioned there deferred grazing. Ian. Can you explain to some people maybe not as familiar with it as yourself what deferred grazing is? Well, on an area like this, as I was saying before, is it's quite a large area. And if, if I put stock onto this, just now I've just got uh, top lambs in here, uh, there's just a bunch of 10 of them here, but it's two, two acres. So two acres of land for 10 sheep, they're not going to effectively graze that area. So, um, so that I can release a better quality of grass, particularly at this time of the year, we're in the end of October coming into November, they had only got access to a certain area and then I can release them on to a better quality of grazing in stages rather than all at once because sheep being sheep or cattle being cattle they'll go and sit in the best grass and make a mess of it and they won't graze that down as effectively so this offers me an opportunity to manage them far better than i usually would have